Hey everyone, it's Friday the 4th of October and it's 4.35 in the afternoon and today we are hopefully going to be changing the freewheel on this wheel. I say hopefully because there's no guarantee they're actually going to come off the wheel. Um, and on top of that I've got a few other things to talk about as well. So let me just flip the camera lens around so I can see it from the other side. Well, the camera screen I should say, not lens. I'm going to open myself up can of Pepsi. Whoa. And then get the bike flipped over. You can't do it this way up. Before I do that, disconnect the brake. Ah. I'm going to flip it that way. Do it like that. Because I want the gears on my side. Oh, and actually, before I do that, I want to make sure it is a six speed, so one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a seven speed. Let me just check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a good job I bought both types out then. I assume that was a six speed. But while I was at the workshop yesterday, I thought, you know what? I'm going to take one of each out, just in case. <laughs> There's a reason why. Right, I'm just going to drop that down to... Well, what should be a seventh gear, but it's not. And just behind you is a carry bag full of parts. But I'm also going to need... Got two spare free wheels in there. I've also bought some extra bits out for that other bike just in case I need to make some adjustments. Considering the dragon mech is like there on it, it may not work and ride correctly like that. So I bought some other chains out which I hope are longer and I've even bought another dragon mech out in case I decide to change that. Alright, this is getting in my way. Either, did I? But I'd need to get I need a slightly larger toolbox. But all I can find in town are little ones like this, or ones that are far too big for what I need. Uh, I mean, I've got a bigger toolbox down in the shed here, it's just full of bolts and sods, but. Uh, some damage to the lid so I don't really want to use that. Right. Oh, I did that up bloody tight. Could even say a bit too tight actually. Now oh come on. Please say you're not turning the whole way axle. No you're not good. Sometimes it can do that, so you're forever doing that, on that one side, then undoing the other and going back and forth like that. Right, there we go. So I'm guessing originally, this isn't the original wheel for this then. Right. I need to just move that bike, I think, so I can get myself on camera a bit better. So let's try and slide that over a bit more. So. First thing you need to do is take that nut off completely. And then you need to get yourself one of these tools. And they come in various shapes and sizes for different free wheels and cassettes. That's for the more uh, most common type, which is what's on this one. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can do it the way I'm going to do it if you haven't got a bench vise. If you've got a bench vise, clamp this in the vise so the jaws clamp that nut, the um, hexagon shaped bit, then you'd put the wheel on top and use the wheel as leverage. And the tool goes in like that. Now you could use either the correct size wrench or a crescent wrench, you might get away with one that big. I like to go with uh, that bad boy. There's a lot of weight, so I've got the weight behind it, as well as the leverage. And I've had this thing for years. 
And this is the only thing I've ever used this on, on these wheels. I'm going to come back a bit, don't I? I'll just put that on there, make sure I've got it all adjusted right. Like that. And I get hold of the wheel and do that. And if you're lucky, they don't put up much of a fire. <laughs> just like that. I'll just unscrew it. And uh, that's actually a good five speed. I'm going to put that in the bag and grab the seven speed, is what I'm going to do. I've got two Shimano's in here. Which one's which? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's seven speed. Let's make sure it is good. Yep. Not good teeth. You can just put it on and screw it on just like that, but every time I tried that in the past, when I, in my early years of doing this, I always cross-threaded it, so I put the tool on like that, and this never fails. Then slide it on, and it actually holds it nice and square, so you can screw it on without the risk of cross-threading it. I don't know if anyone else in this sort of hobby has had the same issue, but that's what I do because I always cross-threaded it otherwise. But there you go, that's the free wheel changed. But we're not done yet, because not only have we got to put it back in the bike, I've got to remember where I threw the wheel on that. <laughs> uh, now I turn it off, where did I put it? There it is. And of course, Ooh. that spindle is so tight, I'm going to have to take that off again. I'm going to have to take it off again. Only because I need to get to the bearing cones on this, because that is, no wonder that is so tough to pedal. I've actually got two of these tools. I didn't... Uh, know which would have been the best one to bring out, so I bought both. Where's that rag? I think someone's had a play around with this wheel. At some point. So, what I'm going to need... Is I need to back that bearing cone on here off just a smidge, because that axle isn't even spinning. So I'm going to need... Remember, that's a 16 or a 17. I know the nuts are usually 17s. That's a 16 I've picked up, isn't it? Yeah. But the brown cones are usually 16s. This is the only thing I ever use the 17s and 16s on when it comes to bicycles for bearing cones on wheels. Better, but Jesus. Got a bent axle, which isn't helping. That's much better, though. Bring that back on. That means it should coast a lot better than it was. You don't actually have to do it up with a wrench. You could just do a hand tight and go for a ride because as soon as you ride it, it's going to pull that tight. Uh, the reason I don't like doing that is because you'll end up having to reset the gears because it's going to move your freewheel over a little bit. Because right, that into what is now 7th gear. That's got to go there. Now I've got to do the find the wheel nut task again. There it is. 
Am I still in shot? I think I'm just about in shot. I'll move the bike in a second. I'll take one of these tools back to the workshop and keep one here. And see if I can find a toolbox just a, a little bit bigger than that one from somewhere. Thirteen and twelve. That's the one I want. And now I've got to fight with this. That's it. Start. And make sure we're still roughly in the centre. Very slight buckle in that wheel. Ah, and I've just seen another problem as well, which I can't address while I'm here. I may actually see if I've got another wheel over at Mum's. I'm going over to hers tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> because. One, this has got a buckle in. I have got my spoke key here, so I could potentially just straighten this one out. Um, but I'm going to need some washers to act as spacers, because I don't need a very big gap, but that frame is almost touching that bottom gear. So I do need a couple of washers in there. I might just pop down to my shed here and see if I've got an old wheel or something I can steal some from. Other than that, I don't think I've got anything that's going to be big enough. I mean, that's not a bad buckle, I should be able to... I, mean, I should be able to get that sort. Well, then them bearings aren't very good either, so yeah. I've got some wheels here actually, I might just go downstairs and see what I've got. I think that'd be a good idea, so I'm going to pause the camera and go and do that. So, I shall return. Got one. It's dirtier, but it is in better condition otherwise. And I found a couple of washers here in case I need them as well. Um, yeah, it's a dirty old wheel, but could be a darn sight better than that one. I can clean this up once it's on the bike. It's not a problem. Yeah, I'm going to take some steel wool or something to that. Right, so the question is, is this free wheel going to come off? Let's get the other wheel off because I'm going to need the tyre and tube off of that as well. Gonna need the wheel nuts off of this. Or at least one. Now, another thing I want to bring back from the workshop is a pair of tar levers because I haven't got any here either. There we go. So I'm gonna need the seven speed from that. I'm gonna put this. Here. Just front heavy now that I've taken the wheel out of it. Right. Uh, I need to grab one of my tools, don't matter which one, that was the same. Come on there. No. on both wheels. I have 
to take some steel wool to that rim. Right. Tomorrow, I'm helping my stepdad to go and collect some um, rocks for the pond and whatnot. Till stuck on there. there we go. Till did not want to let go. Uh, and yesterday, I was uh, fitting a start motor to step dad's van. Um, yeah, that was fun and games and all. Um, yeah, that was not an easy one to get to. Well, it was easy enough to get to once you got it on a pair of ramps. But... I'm not going to need the washers. Um, the issue was that one of the bolts was a right bastard to get to. So I was literally laying under his van for a good hour at least, fighting with this poxy starter motor to get the old one off and then to get the new one on. Because he couldn't go in from the top. That was the other ass. Not unless you want to spend hours taking off God knows what, to try and make enough access to get to the starter motor wires. So the easiest option, at least for us, was to go in from underneath, right? And obviously there weren't enough room to just crawl in underneath, so we had to get it up on the ramps of the driveway. And... Uh, when you get under there, there's not a great deal of uh, wiggle room for your hands. So what we did, we eventually got both bolts out. Bottom one piece of cake. You can access that one, no problem. Top one, a bit more cons um, constraint. A bit more, uh, I can't think of a bloody word. A bit more of a pain in the ass, basically. And you could only move the ratchet, and I'm not kidding, a millimetre at a time. So that took time to not only undo the bloody thing, but do the bloody thing up again. And then, of course, while you undo the wires from the old star mirror, because I actually had to take the motor out so I could access the back of it to get to the two wires. So I had to take it out first. Um, you've got to support the weight of the motor, obviously, and they're not light. <laughs> Starter motors are not very light. And then, of course, it's even worse when you've got to put it together. It doesn't matter too much with the old one, it's broken. It doesn't matter if you smash it, drop it, or whatever. You just don't want to damage the existing wires, of course. Um, yeah, it's even trickier because you've got to hold the weight. There's only room for one of us under there. Well, no, actually my stepdad did actually get under there, surprisingly. Um, to help wiggle it into place, because obviously you, know, you don't just slot straight in, you've got to get all the, uh, the teeth and whatnot lined up on the Bendix to line up with the... Uh, your flywheel in the car, or the van, in this case. Um, so yeah, that took a bit of wiggle. That weren't too bad. We did get it in there, a little bit of wiggling, then we just had to rotate it round until we got the bolts to line up and go in. I've done it on a Transit Connect van. In fact, it was the van previous to the Mercedes VO that he's now got. Some dipstick ran into the back of. Uh, 
and he was at Norwich one day and got written off. Otherwise I bet he'd still be using that van if not for that. Um, yeah, I had to do it on that one. That's piss easy. That was a walk in the park. It took me about 20 minutes. Being front wheel drive, all I had to do was stick my head under the front bumper. Didn't even have to jack it up, put it on ramps or anything. Just slid under the front bumper. There it was, right at the front of the engine at the bottom. Two bolts held it on. Your two nuts that hold your wires on. You want to do all of them. Take it off, slide the new one in. More hand room, so it's a lot easier to wiggle it in place. Yeah, I, I don't mind doing the transit connects. Mercedes Vitos though, new. No. I think I can understand why mechanics charge what they do now because some of these vehicles are an absolute pain in the ass. Here that I can use. I've got two pumps up here actually. One that I rescued out of the bins out back. I don't know why that was uh, thrown away. This is where a cameraman would be useful, you know, because when you're trying to work on something like this, you often forget to check the camera. So if I disappear off the out of view, that'll be why. And there we go. This is ready to go into the bike, man. What's supposed to be seventh? Get the wheel slotted in. Yep, we've got space, that's good. Get in there. Might take a little bit of a persuading, hang on. Are we back all the way? Uh, I think so. Give a few more love taps. This is actually a much better fit in general, this wheel. <laughs> the other one, the frame was still, there's still a lot of space between the wheel and the frame, which is one of the reasons I needed the spaces in there. But I don't need them with this wheel. Now that's not the wheel, that's a little bulge in the tyre right there. It's fine. Being standard bike wheels, this nut should fit it perfectly fine. Which it does not. Shit, my bloody stick. Why does that not fit? Thread doesn't look boogered. Seriously? <laughs> um. I'm soon enough the thread's boogered. If I can get this one off. If this one doesn't go on, then I know the thread is a bit good. Nope, that one's going on perfectly, so it is the nuts. Well, I want to get the gears all set up on this, and I'm going to see if I can get this side tightened up. Because otherwise, when you pull on that and pedal it, it's going to twist the wheel that way. But in theory, if I get at least this nut on, it won't do that. And I've got to just worry about trying to find one that will fit the other side. That's good. What about gear wise? Right. I need to screw that up. I'm sure. I'm going to bring the camera a bit closer actually. So you can actually see a little bit better at what I'm actually trying to do. Well, that wheel spins a heck of a lot better, doesn't it? <laughs> Just to get up. Undo that one a smidge. I'm actually curious. I'm actually curious. I'm actually going to have to adjust the gears. Yep. 
Do I need to do that this way? Nope. So what I'm going to do is screw that in, crank that down, because it's not quite going into first. But I know it'll go in fine, because I'm going to push the driver up. That's fine, so the set screws are perfectly okay. And what I need is a 9mm. Small toolbox, a lot of weight. I need to undo this, pull on the cable, do it back up, pull on some of that slack that was in it. You've got to be careful with these because you can over tighten these quite easily and then thread the bolt and or nut. set screw that was off, not the cable at all. Well there we go, pump the tyre up and she's good to go. Yeah, that's all still good. I have bought some extra V-brakes out just in case this one does pose a problem. This one side doesn't spring very well. And it's, yeah, that one's weak, I can feel it. But it was this one that was causing a problem, wasn't it? Right. Another pump on me. There we go. All done. I don't know what I'm going to do with either of these bikes. I don't really need to keep either of them. But. I've just been looking on Facebook Marketplace and noticed that there's a lot of bikes on there where the price has been drastically reduced. You know, there's one on there for 75 quid reduced to 30. Um, I think there's another one on there for 80 quid, again reduced to about 30 quid. So they're just not selling. So I'm a bit reluctant, at least at the moment, you know, to put these uh, up on Marketplace. I think they'd be up there for months. What's not, this is going to need a bit of a clean. But I can do that when I clean the wheel. For now... <laughs> stuck on the floor, mate. Oh, how the bar grip is on the move. It's not working guys. I'm trying to grab the bloody pump. I'm knocking into everything. <sighs> right. Yeah, I really don't know why this pump was uh in the bed. It worked fine, it worked great actually. pressure gauge on it so you've got to feel the tyre. I guess just keep going until you're happy. Yeah, there we go. Check both sides of that tyre, make sure I haven't popped off the rim because they do sometimes. 
Right. Flip her back over, brother. Reconnect the brake. Hey, presto. So now that that whole wheel has changed its position and whatnot, I've got to readjust all that. But oddly, both sides are actually now springing fine. Maybe the wheel was at fault then for that brake. Maybe uh, there wasn't anything wrong with it at all. I suppose as there was uh, some buckles in it, that would be throwing the brake out, wouldn't it? I didn't know those buckles were there until today. Right. Might as well uh, get this done then. that a wee bit too much, a bit too much scrum there. And that's coming in out. Is the V-breakers once now I've set it up like that. A fair bit of a well the other side just is not bloody springing like it should so but it's not rubbing too much and it is working so I'm just gonna leave it as is. Obviously I can't go anywhere on it for a ride because I've got up that side. think I actually have one here that's going to fit. I don't even know if I've got one at the workshop that's going to fit. I've had this problem before but it's not a common problem. It looks exactly the same. It's not going to go on there. When that gets to there then... No good. your white china in there. <laughs> she looked at me as if to say, fudge off, dad. <laughs> right. I'll just lay some of these tools, at least on the toolbox, I don't know where they are. Couple on here that I don't need. More spanners, and I don't know what to do with that. She bought some of these uh, vice grips back as well because I had none of these here either. In my infinite wisdom, when I got the workshop over at Mum's, I uh, took most of my tools there. Yeah, that wasn't a smart thing to do, was it? Now, where do I put my second free wheel remover tool? under that. There it is. They're not that cheap. They're not that expensive, but they're not that cheap either. So I'd rather not have to replace them every two minutes. Right, that's just a bit of scrap. I mean, you could salvage it, you could take the axle out, redo all the bearings and whatnot. You know, put it all back together, straighten the wheel out, but it's not really worth it, is it? It's not worth that much hassle. I've got spares. That and I'm not doing a great deal with bicycles at the minute. Apart from these two projects, just because I was bored and needed to scratch an itch. But, uh, yeah, I nearly did buy a job lot for 50 quid, but then I thought, I've got nowhere to put them. And then I thought at the moment, you know, can't get rid of them. I mean, I had those four that it took me months to get rid of.
And that was at giveaway prices as well. So, uh, yeah, I might just keep hold of these in storage until next spring and maybe things will be different next year. I mean, I paid 30 quid for this muddy, fo muddy, muddy fox. Um, so I don't even claim that I'd get much more than that. I might get my money back even if I did sell it. I've not spent any money on it, you know. It's all bits I've had at hand. Apart from the brand new rear brake cable, but again, that was something I just had sitting in the workshop. I didn't go out and specifically buy it for this bike. Brake levers aren't quite lined up either. I've just noticed that. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. You see that? If you look closely, one of them is actually the right one is actually lower than the left. I didn't level them up very well, did I? Not at all, actually. <laughs> I'm going to take the stupid bell off. British law says that brand new bikes and even bike shops selling, I think, bike shops that sell second hand bikes as well. Could be wrong, it could just be the brand new ones. They have to be sold with a bell. So what they often do is put these stupid cheap ones on that last about two minutes. Because the springs just rust. They rust and then your dinger falls off. No one ever uses them, no one likes them because they're not even good to look at. They don't sound good. I mean the spring is twisted already on that. See, it's rusting, and a number of them I actually come across where this bit is just broken off because of the rust. Yeah. You know, it's literally just a cheap piece of crap they put on the bike to comply with our laws, that's all. If you want a bike bell on your bike, get something better. Or even get an, a little um, horn thing. I have got a horn somewhere, it's down here. <laughs> get one of these. Put one of them on your bike. I'm not going to do it too loud because the cats don't like loud noises. They hate it when my smoke alarms go off. I don't know what bike to put that on. Oh, yes I do. I could put that on my trike project, actually. With a bit of amusement. My vintage trike. My Pashley. I paid 20 quid for it. Previous owner had done a bad paint job, even he admitted it wasn't the best paint job in the world. It was a bit hard to deny it actually. <laughs> Not the worst. The main issue was the overspray. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to spray it yellow, the colour it's currently painted in, or if I'm going to go orange just for something different, because I've got some orange paint. I've got lacquer. I'll have to get some primer and whatnot. Um, I had wanted to take that over to the workshop and do it there, but the workshop's full of shite at the minute. Um, half my shite and half stepdad's shite. It's like a shared workshop now. <laughs> we are, seriously, we, are, we probably annoy each other. Um, you know, because we all get things, we both get things out, we both don't put things away. We then both get irritated because we can't find what we're looking for. <laughs> I do try my best to actually put the tools back once I've used them. Or they're usually laying on the bench. and never usually that far away with me. And why is it? No matter how many benches you have in a workshop, they're always full of something. You never have a free spot to work on. Not, at least not in our workshop. I mean, we've put a load of carpet up on one of them out of the way to try and keep it drier. Um, which is going to get used up soonish. Uh, and there's all my boards for the Lego City tables when I get them built. 
now that my stepdad's got a working van again, I'll see if we can arrange a day to uh, head over to Cats and get that wood. I want to get myself a circular saw and a jigsaw so I can cut it here. Or like my stepdad said, I measure up, you know, the height, what I need um, and what not, we cut them there. Which I think I will do. And then whatever's left, I can cut and measure and just put in here. I've got to do it in little bits, I'll do it in little bits. I'll just fill her over the cracks to hide them and then sand it and paint them all. And I'm going to need painting anyway so that it all matches up. Yeah. Perhaps that could be a winter project now. I'm not going to be able to do much outside, am I? I just want to get these tables built in here, then I can arrange the Lego and actually have some sort of... I think that's what's been doing my head in the most. The Lego just is not organised. You know, I want to organise it. I might do away with all the die cast on this side here and use that as like a, a workbench sort of thing and some extra storage and then the die cast because there isn't really a lot on display on there anymore but I'm sure I could find elsewhere to put some shelves put some up in the hallway actually there will be some going up on this when that is sorted or maybe display cases I might do it that way but that won't be until the new year Yeah, I mean, just hope the display cases don't fall off the wall, actually, because my stepdad bought one off Amazon that fell off his wall in the mud railway room. Smashed one of the doors, I think. Tempered glass, so it just shattered into a thousand pieces. Which surprised me being tempered glass. It's usually pretty tough, unless it hits, you know, like a, a fine point. And then it just goes, pshh. Like side windows on cars, it's one of the reasons they're so tough to break with a blunt object. They don't break very well with blunt objects. How's that doing? Heck, it's processing already. I've actually just removed the video from YouTube because I put the wrong one up. I didn't realise until today, so I've just edited the right one. I'll upload that later. Then I'll go back and re-upload the other ones so they're in right order. <laughs> Can't believe I didn't realise. So yeah, this one is part two of that black mountain bike build, the free one. Oh yeah, I just got to make a custom thumbnail for that as well, and one for this one. I don't know if I'm going to get a good one with this one, so I might go with an automatic generated one. But we'll see. Get these screwdrivers back in the toolbox, can't I? We'll top the toolbox for now. Right, I've got to end the video here, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. As always, you know what to do if you like the video, like the video, if you didn't, dislike the video. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and all the other weird and wonderful stuff I do. You know, like collect barricade lamps, die cast models, uh, Lego, all sorts, <laughs> computers. Um, yeah, you'll get to see all of that if you subscribe. Free, totally free. And uh, I will see you all in the next video. See you later. Bye.